like me, you want to give the people you love and hold dear something that they'll cherish, you know, something that they will love and be able to use. But, as we all know, times are hard, and with the economy in the state that it's in, we're all holding on to our wallets a little bit tighter than we normally would. So, instead of buying a present, why not make one? Knit a scarf. You know, it's fun, and you spend way less money buying the materials to make a scarf than you would buying a present. And plus, you don't have to go through all that hassle in the store, you know, consumer madness at Christmas time. And it's just so much fun and relaxing. And guys, if you make a girl a scarf, she'll like it, trust me. Not from personal experience, but. <laughs> so today I will introduce to you the beginner's material needed to knit a scarf. I will show you the actual knit stitch, and I will show you how to finish a scarf. Okay, yeah. So, when you get needles to knit your scarf, you want to get something probably from a size 10 to size 15. This one is a size 11. The bigger the needle is, it's easier to see the stitches. So, like, as you can see with this yarn on here, it's, you can easily see that this is, these are stitches. With small yarn, you know, it gets kind of confusing and stuff like that, but 10 to 15 and up, great. Um, as you can see here, I put a picture right here. This is from a yarn label. Uh, this, this tells the weight of the yarn, but this is where you need to look when you go to get your yarn. It says size 9 US, that's for knitting. This means you get size 9 needles for that yarn. Don't worry about that, that's for shame. <laughs> and there are also patterns you could use when you knit, but as a beginner, there probably aren't that many, you know, basic patterns, like straight knitting. But you can also do your own. Once you know how to do the basic stitch, you can just make it as wide as you want and as long as you want, which is really fun. So the first thing you do before you start knitting is you cast on. Now, casting on is how you put your stitches on the needle. As you can see here, I already did some right here. But what you basically do is you're going to make a slip knot and put it on, as you can see right here. And put the slip knot on the needle, pull it tight. And then you're going to add more stitches to the needle with your thumb. So you just do this. You just basically just take your thumb and go like this and stick the needle through. And you add as many as your pattern calls for. Or you could just, if you're doing your own, like I said earlier, you could just do whatever you want. So that's how you cast on. <clears throat> now to garter stitch. This is the basic knit stitch. As you can see here, I had some examples of it. You can pass it around if you want to. This is the garter stitch. This is when I used it in a scarf. It's very basic. Like, it's very easy. Children can do it. It's, <laughs> it's very basic. The garter stitch. Basic, basic. Here, you can pass this one around too. And it can be used to make a simple scarf, as I showed you with my example there. <laughs> Now, to start performing the garter stitch, you want to place the needle with your cast on stitches in your left hand and your empty needle in your right hand. Now, in the picture, they hold the yarn tail over their right hand, but I have to hold it in my left hand. But I'll explain it to you as they do in the picture. So, what you're going to do first is insert your right hand needle into the first stitch on your left hand needle, as you can see in the picture. Make sure it's going from front to back, not back to front, because that's a different stitch. This is beginner's class, so <laughs> it's just going from front to back. And then you're going to transfer the right hand needle to the left hand. So you're still holding it like this, and it's still in the X shape. And while you're holding on to both needles, you're going to wrap the yarn around in a clockwise motion. Make sure you only wrap it around the right hand needle, not the left hand needle. You'll have problems if you do. Now you're going to pull the needle through this first stitch. It gets a little hairy right here for some people because they let the yarn fall off or they wrap it around the wrong way and stuff. Clockwise motion, pull it through the first stitch like this, and you're going to end up in your X position, which is like the home position for knitting. So this is the easiest part. You slip the stitch off the needle, and now you can go and knit the rest of the stitches. Very simple. I know it sounds a little hard, but it's very simple. Now, what do you do when you get to the end of a row? Well, it's simple. As you can see in these pictures here, I got to the end of the row on this piece of knitted work, and you just turn it around, place the work, the knitted work that was on your right needle, just switch the needle. So you start again on the other side. So if I say if I were done with this, I would just turn it around and start knitting in the other direction. Very easy. Now, here I have a short video to demonstrate binding off, which is what you do when you get to the end of your scarf. So, let me just play that. Today, I will be showing how to bind off. When you get to the end of your knitted work, you want to close it off so that it won't unravel. That's what you do with binding off. So, first thing you do is knit the first stitch as you would normally, but then you're going to knit the second stitch. And this is when you slip your needle in your left hand into the first stitch you knitted on the right needle, and you're just going to slide it over the second stitch. I'll do that again so you can see the 
and you're just binding off. It looks really nice at the end on the edges. So once you're finished with your scarf or whatever you knit, you may want to block it. Some people do blocking, you know, some patterns call for it. Blocking is when you would wet the piece of, for example, this scarf that I have here that I passed around, you would wet it. Say you knitted it too tightly or something. Well, you want it to be a little bit wider, so you would wet it and you would place it down on like a cork board or something and pin it in the shape that you want it to be in. And then when it dries, it'll be like stretched out, shape you want it to be in. Also, you can add tassels if you would like. See, not everybody likes those, but you know, some of them makes it look more fun. You know, like girls like the little tassels. You know, we like our frilly edges and stuff sometimes. Some of us. <laughs> so, there's many videos online on how to do these. There's different ways. I'm not going to get into those today because it's for beginners. So that's a little extra you could do for fun. Now, <clears throat> as I stated at the beginning, knitting is such a fun way to make a present for somebody. And it's usable. And like I said, guys, just side note, girls will like it if you knit them something. They'll love it. And knitting, it doesn't cost as much as buying a present. And it's very meaningful. You know, like when you were little and you gave your grandma like a little macaroni picture and there's like, oh, I love this. I'm putting it on the refrigerator. It's that kind of that same type of idea as handmade stuff is cherished more than you just bought it at Macy's or something, you know? This is really great. So with the information I presented here today, with the introduction to the beginner's materials in knitting, the showing of the actual knit stitch and how to finish the scarf, you can make one too. Hopefully that's my hope for you. But when in doubt, remember this. When in doubt about the knit stitch, remember this. Through the front door, around the back, peek through the front window, and off jumps Jack. Thank you for your time. <laughs>